Have you ever wondered what's really out there in the cosmos? What mind-blowing mysteries the universe might be concealing from us? Well, you're in for a ride. We have a revelation. So colossal it's about to rewrite everything we thought we knew about the universe. Brace yourself as the renowned American physicist Michio Kaku announces his theory that time and space are like a fabric like rubber like a trampoline net turned. This trampoline net James Webb Space Telescope is essentially the Hubble Space Telescope's bigger cooler sibling. Launched on Christmas Day 2021, this telescope has taken up residence in space illuminating secrets from the universe's darkest and most distant corners. It may have shown that time does not exist. Prepare to dive into a space-time riddle that's going to turn your world upside down. Incredibly powerful infrared instruments that make it ideal for looking back in time how you ask well its unprecedented resolution and sensitivity allow it to detect extremely old and faint objects that even Hubble couldn't glimpse we're talking about distant galaxies and celestial bodies from the early universe. Those elusive entities that have been playing an epic cosmic hide-and-seek with us in essence, James Webb is helping us piece together the universe's grand star-shaping story imaging yourself in an art gallery. Perusing magnificent images taken by the James Webb Space Telescope, also known as JWST. The imagery is stunning, showing distant galaxies shimmering across the cosmic canvas. However, among the astronomers and cosmologists, you can see shock and disbelief. There is a sense of turmoil, almost as if they are staring at a Picasso in a room full of realists. A common response you hear is this is unexpected. So what Big Bang hypothesis? which holds that the universe began in a massive explosion about 14 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since, is the basis of their understanding of the cosmos. But even though the official papers are mum on the subject, the real problem lies with this theory. The Big Bang hypothesis has long been the cornerstone of cosmological understanding but the new images from the JWST seem to call into question its veracity. The galaxies captured by the JWST aren't behaving as they should according to the Big Bang hypothesis because they are too small, too smooth, too old, and there are way too many of them. To try to simplify the two small conundrums, if you imagine the universe as an expanding balloon, Galaxies shouldn't look smaller as they move a little bit. Kirkpatrick, a seasoned astronomer from the University of Kansas, is tossing and turning images from the JWST show galaxies that are about the same size as the ones near us, which is a strange but crucial twist in the expanding universe concept. It's like you're expecting your distant friends to appear as tiny dots on the horizon but instead they are right next to you just as large as life. Interestingly, they show galaxies appearing smaller than we'd expect, despite having more luminosity and mass than our own Milky Way. These images show galaxies that appear to be two to three times smaller than those observed by the Hubble Space Telescope, or HST. These galaxies also have significantly higher redshifts, which simply means they are supposedly moving away from us at a faster rate. You might think that's odd, and you'd be right, especially if you are operating under the assumption that galaxies are moving away from us at a few years ago, in 2014. Some astronomers noticed this discrepancy in the universe. They looked at HST images and discovered that galaxies with redshifts up to five matched expectations for a non-expanding, typical space. It was predicted that the JWST would continue this trend, and it has, even for galaxies with redshifts as high as 12. In other words, the JWST images show galaxies that look the same size as those nearby as if the universe isn't expanding and redshift is merely a function of distance. But if we still cling to the Big Bang theory, and its expanding universe concept, 
we're left with a pretty perplexing conclusion that these distant galaxies must be incredibly small to counterbalance the supposed optical illusion created by an expanding universe. It's kind of like imagining a considerable galaxy called GHC2 that the JWST discovered. It is much brighter than the Milky Way but has a radius estimated to be only 300 light years compared to the Milky Way's estimated 50,000 light year radius. This means that GHC2's brightness per unit area would be 600 times greater than that of the brightest galaxy in our local universe. In addition, GHC2's density and that of several other new galaxies would be thousands. These discoveries are causing quite a stir among astronomers and cosmologists because over the years, Hubble Space Telescope images have been difficult for them to interpret because they suggest the existence of many galaxies that are dense and powerful, much like Mighty Mouse from old cartoons. These galaxies are a difficult puzzle for them, and with the new James Webb Space Telescope things have only gotten trickier. The idea put forth by galaxies theorists is like playing with a magical toy car that, despite being only a centimeter long, weighs as much as an actual SUV. They propose that these micro galaxies collide over billions of years, merging to form the full-sized galaxies we see today. However, there is a twist. The JWST has closely examined these galaxies and found no sign of any collisions. In contrast, the JWST reveals galaxies that are smooth, neat spirals, just like the ones we see nearby. There is an overwhelming lack of galactic fender dents. In fact, one study aptly titled Panic highlights that there are 10 times more of these pristine spiral galaxies than the theorists had predicted. This is an amazing discovery. Speeding cars but no accidents, it's a pretty significant blow to the collision theory with no signs of galactic mergers, the idea that these tiny galaxies somehow expanded into their grander counterparts falls apart if they didn't grow in size, it means they weren't small to begin with, consequently the optical illusion we'd expect from an expanding universe doesn't seem to be there without this illusion, the concept of expansion loses ground, hence the growing unease among Big Bang Yinti. THUSISDS8. 12. The appearance of these small and smooth galaxies suggests that the universe may not be expanding, and if it isn't, the Big Bang Theory takes a major hit. And there's another aspect to consider the Big Bang Theory suggests that everything came into existence following the Big Explosion. However, if these galaxies existed before that, then it would mean the Big Bang didn't happen. This could be a game changer for our understanding of the universe's origins. Consider the James Webb Space Telescope as a time machine in words of Mickey Othis amazing devices focused on the infrared, revealing colors of galaxies so distant we could never observe them with our naked eye. Now here's the fascinating part. These colors aren't just beautiful. They're telling a story about the age of the stars in these galaxies young fiery stay. According to the Big Bang Theory, the galaxies farthest away in the JWST images represent a cosmic snapshot from about 400 to 500 million years after the universe's birth. But some of these galaxies appear to house stars that are over a billion years old now if you've been following the by. You know that some of these galaxies appear to house stars that are over a billion years old now. No object should be older than the Big Bang itself, which is a problem. Another expectation if the Big Bang theory is true is that as we look farther into space, which means looking further back in time, we should see fewer and fewer galaxies until we reach a point where there are none. However, the evidence suggests that galaxies as massive as the Milky Way were already fairly common even a few hundred million years after the SWAT, at least 100,000 times more galaxies than expected at redshifts greater than 10. So the question is, how could so many large galaxies form in such a short period of time? The answer is that they probably couldn't, at least not within the parameters of the Big Bang Theory. 
and that's why these discoveries are challenging the fundamental assumptions underlying our comprehension of the universe. On top of that, there's this intriguing piece of information that suggests the Big Bang Theory may actually be off the mark on quite a few things. According to the popular belief system, believe it or not, according to recent research, the Big Bang Theory incorrectly predicts 16 events. Yes, 16. The Big Bang Theory also has trouble explaining these massive structures that we see in the universe because, according to the theory, these structures are simply too big to fit within the Big Bang's predicted parameters. The only prediction it nails is the abundance of deuterium, which is just a fancy name for a type of hydrogen. But it doesn't stop there. The theory also stumbles when predicting the density of matter in the universe. And here's a fun fact, remember those supposedly non-existent asymmetries in the cosmic microwave background? Yeah, it turns out they do exist, it's like a cosmic plot twist. So where does this leave us enter the James Webb Space Telescope? This technological wonder might just hold the solutions to these cosmic contradictions. These discrepancies between the theory and observation may be resolved by the James Webb Space Telescope. The universe's nature and origins. Not to mention that these aren't just any random puzzle pieces. Rather, they are the cornerstones of our understanding of space and matter. These anomalies call into question everything we thought we knew about the formation and evolution of the universe. And we can assure you that they are far from negligible. Each minor error is like a missing piece in our understanding of the cosmos. For example, if the density of matter is off, it could change our understanding of how galaxies form and evolve and also change our perspective on the role of dark matter in it. Similarly, the unexpected asymmetries in the cosmic microwave background could change our understanding of how galaxies form and evolve. These phenomena fundamentally influence our understanding of gravitational waves, dark matter, and even the ultimate fate of the universe. To make matters worse, these discrepancies even have implications for our understanding of time. Since our current understanding of time is connected to the evolution of the universe since the Big Bang, if the Big Bang theory is found to be false, we may need to reconsider how we perceive time, its flow, and its relationship to space. If this is the case, the results may cause a paradigm shift in how we view time. The universe seems to still have a few surprises up its sleeve, don't you think? Let us ask you this. Have you ever wondered if time as we understand it actually exists or is it just a human-made concept to help us separate the past from the present? We know it's a heavy question to ask. But stick with us, there's a theory that suggests that time as we understand it may not actually exist. If you've heard of the Big Crunch Theory, it suggests that when the universe stops expanding and starts to contract, everything that has ever happened and will ever happen is happening right now. This is a little strange, isn't it? Let's look into it further. You think time flows forward naturally, right? Well. Guess what? The laws of physics don't actually demand that these laws work just as well whether the time is moving forward or backward. Some theories suggest that a new universe may emerge from a fresh Big Bang, while others propose that our universe may reappear somewhere entirely like a cosmic bubble popping into existence. There are even theories suggesting that this cycle might repeat itself over and over again leading to countless possible universes. You might wonder what comes after the Big Crunch. It's a question that has puzzled us all. Einstein's theory of relativity supports the idea that time and space are connected in our universe and that forward or backward motion has led some scientists to the bold conclusion that time as we know it is only a human construct. In this scenario, all past, present, and future events have their own coordinates in the four-dimensional space-time. What does this mean for us? Well, it suggests that everything is as real as the present moment the past, 
It's a lot to wrap your head around. But isn't it fascinating to think about such questions because it demonstrates how fascinating the universe is? MIT physicist Max Stegmark described the concept of space-time beautifully. He said we could view our reality as a three-dimensional place where stuff happens over time or a four-dimensional place where nothing happens, everything just is. Then there is Julian Barber, a British physicist with an intriguing viewpoint on time. In his view, reality is a series of distinct now moments, similar to individual snapshots. To put it another way, Barber sees the universe as a photo album where each image represents its own distinct now. Barber also claims that our perception of the past is merely a construct of our brain's memories, meaning that we only feel as though we have a past because we have memories of it. In his spatial theory, which he jokingly refers to as Plutonia, Barber further develops the idea that Barber might be an illusion. In this theory, each now moment exists in a location within a vast landscape that follows perfect mathematical rules, making it timeless in nature. This perspective connects back to a much more well-known name, Albert Einstein. Einstein's theory of space-time is central to our current understanding of space and time. It may seem shocking, but it's important to understand that the field of science thrives on such revolutions. Theories are constantly being challenged, refined, and sometimes completely replaced. It is through this ongoing cycle of inquiry and discovery that science advances. What if Einstein's space-time concept was incorrect? Could discarding it entirely provide us with a clearer understanding of the universe? Has developed over time. The geocentric model, which put Earth at the center of the solar system for more than a thousand years, was eventually replaced by Nicholas Copernicus, who proposed the radical notion that Earth is just another planet orbiting the sun. After Copernicus, Isaac Newton introduced a new understanding of gravity, proposing that all objects with mass have a gravita, tidal attraction to one another in this framework. After Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, which redefined our understanding of gravity and spacetime, was introduced in 1915. Einstein proposed that massive objects like the sun cause a curvature in the four-dimensional fabric of spacetime. Earth orbits the sun because it follows this curve, which we perceive as a gravitational pull. This is the transition from a geocentric to a gravitational universe. Although Einstein's theories have a strong foundation, physicists are still questioning, investigating, and pushing the limits of our knowledge of time in the universe. Einstein's space-time theory has stood the test of time for more than a century, fending off all challengers. A significant victory for it came in 2015 with the detection of gravitational waves. Despite this, no theory I. For example, a single particle can exist in two places at once. Erwin Schrödinger famously illustrated this with a thought experiment involving a cat, a poison vial, and a quantum particle tied to a hammer. The hammer is a quantum particle. When Einstein's general relativity, which includes the concept of space-time, meets with quantum physics, the two seem to operate on entirely different rules. This mind-bending idea seems impossible to reconcile with Einstein's theory of a smooth continuous fabric of space-time. As Sabine Hazenfelder, a theoretical physicist at the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies, pointed out, she noted that a gravitational field can't be in two places at once as Perry and Stein's theory of general relativity. General relativity and quantum theory tend to break down at certain energy levels because the math produces probabilities greater than one, which is forbidden in physics because one implies certainty. And sometimes it even produces the result of infinity which has no real world physical meaning. Hosenfelder explained that this disparity leaves a perplexing question about the nature and location of the gravitational field. 
general relativity, and quantum theory are two fundamental tenets of physics. There is currently a race in the field to find a theory that reconciles these two concepts, bringing them together harmoniously like the reconciliation of two feuding royal families. This search has prompted some theorists to consider some pretty outlandish theories. For instance, one of the most well-known in this field is string theory which postulates that the smallest subatomic particles, such as electrons and Pratt string theory is appealing because it, at least theoretically, unifies general relativity and quantum physics. However, there is a catch. In order for this unification to occur, these strings need to resonate across 11 dimensions, which is seven more than the four dimension three of space and one of time that we are familiar with from Einstein. This idea can be visualized by thinking of the strings on a musical instrument. Different vibrations or notes result in different particles. Concerns about string theory have led some physicists to explore another alternative called loop quantum gravity, LQG. LQG can unite the two competing theories but necessitates a significant rethink of one of general relativity's central premises that space-time is a smooth, continuous fabric once more. Instead, LQG suggests that space-time is composed of a network of loops, implying a network of extra dimensions. The challenge with LQG is the scale at which these structural changes in space-time become noticeable. The Planck scale, this is a mind-bogglingly tiny scale around a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a meter. At this scale, there would be more loops in a cubic centimeter of space than there are atoms in the entire universe. It would take a particle accelerator 1,000 trillion times more powerful than CERN's Large Hadron Collider to test such a minute scale, which is roughly the size of our entire Milky Way galaxy. While building a particle accelerator as large as our Milky Way sounds a bit like science fiction, a group of physicists from the UK, France, and Germany have managed to overcome this challenge. In order to test whether gravity might have a quantum site, they plan to use an extremely cold gas made up of billions of cesium atoms in a state known as a Bose-Einstein condensate. Interestingly, the universe itself may provide a second way to detect these minute space-time structures because the light we observe from the universe's farthest reaches has traveled through billions of light years of space-time. If there are minute imperfections in that space-time, the light will in fact. For the past 10 years, astronomers have been using light from distant gamma-ray bursts to search for evidence that might support loop quantum gravity. These intense flashes of light are caused by massive stars collapsing as they approach the end of their lives. And intriguingly, there's a consistent distortion in the spectrum of these far-off gamma-ray bursts that might provide evidence for loop quantum gravity. It's unclear whether this distortion occurs during the light's journey to us or if it has anything to do with the origin of the bursts themselves. It's a mystery. However, in order to make real progress, we may need to move beyond Einstein's view that space-time is a smooth, continuous fabric Einstein saw space-time as a sort of stage, a backdrop that would exist even without the actors, the stars, and planets. However, as we explore quantum gravity, we may need Laurent Friedel, Robert Lee, and George Hermanic. Three forward-thinking physicists are flipping the script and suggesting that space-time isn't something that needs to be merged with the quantum world but that the way we think about space-time might be limiting our understanding. According to them, space-time doesn't exist separately from the things within it, but is instead defined by the interactions between objects, the entanglement phenomenon, which occurs when two particles are so closely connected that a change in one causes a change in the other to occur immediately regardless of distance seems to violate general relativity because it's like information traveling faster than light. This new perspective on space-time theory, which is as precise as it is groundbreaking, may hold the key to understanding this enigma.
As Hermenic put it, it's like feeling closer to a loved one who's far away than to a stranger living next door in the quantum world. These non-local connections are entirely plausible if we view space-time through the lens of this modulus theory. If space-time is derived from the quantum world, then closeness in a quantum sense takes precedence over physical proximity. The appeal of their approach is that it imagines a quantum world with gravity rather than trying to apply quantum rules to gravity as loop quantum gravity does. The next big step for them is incorporating time into their model. While all of this may seem a bit abstract and purely academic, the implications could actually transform our daily lives because our understanding of space-time affects our grasp of both gravity and quantum theory as well as how time travel works. The reigning theory of space-time, like any long-standing monarch, may soon be deposed and it's high time for new contenders. It's difficult to predict which of the many theoretical contenders will ultimately triumph but when the revolution does happen, it could herald a new era of discoveries for theoretical physics. So what's the next move? What do you think? Do you think the James Webb Telescope will solve our problems? Or will it only make us rethink our assumptions even more? Subscribe to our channel for more content like this.